Hello folks. Today I've traveled to a beautiful town in the mountains of upstate New York. It's called Elmira and today we are doing something very interesting. I'm sure most of you have heard of a guy named Mark Twain. Yeah, uh, he lived in this place for many many years. Actually, he studied here, he wrote many different books, and what are you gonna do in this small town? You're gonna relax, you're gonna just chill out, maybe write a couple American bestsellers. I've come here to see what I can find in this beautiful town with a lot of old buildings, like this. So yeah, let's see what we can find. Supposedly, right here is where he sat in the outside, in the open in this beautiful plain with a little lake over there. And he wrote some books like Huckleberry Finn, some other things, I'm sure. Now just look at the beauty of this building complex. Clearly you can tell it was built before 1900. Clearly in Mark Twain's time. Of course, there's a parking lot there now, but before that, it was just this nice grand building. It's just very weird to think that antiquity and uh, modernity with the cars going by and all that can coexist side by side. And you see that in today's age a lot more. So this is the study itself. This is where Mark Twain did all that writing. If you read a book in high school or something, uh, there's a good chance you'd probably end up reading something along the lines of something written by Mark Twain. I've got to say, they really kept up the historical feel. They have all these brick buildings and it looks very nice. They even have this pool here. And I've got to say, it's not sure if it was made before or during or after Mark Twain's time, but it it's off. It's very green. I'll show you. See, it's it almost doesn't look like real water. Oh, here we go. All right. Let me show you all this. This is Samuel Clemens, also known as Mark Twain. And here, I think, are the books he's best known for. Huckleberry Finn, like I said. Tom Sawyer, that was the one I forgot earlier. Now, of course he wasn't born here. He was born around, well, I don't know what time, but he was born um, in the state of Missouri. And he moved up here in his middle age. And he, he liked it so much he stayed there. And he's actually buried here. But the fact of the matter is, he loved it so much he stayed here and wrote his best novels here. Now, of course, I don't read many books. When I hear the word literature, I'm like, oh, okay, it's that stuff. But aside from the books he wrote, the fact that he cemented himself as such a crucial figure in American history is what Elmira loves about him.
You know, I find it so interesting. I just got out of the cemetery, but I find it really interesting how even the smallest parts of humanity, such as the cemetery, tell the most interesting stories. Apart from uh, the Mark Twain grave, you saw many different types of graves for both civilians, for veterans, and you start to think to yourself, what's the story behind people wanting to build large graves, almost looking like stone houses? What's the reason behind people throwing a bunch of decorations or items out of respect onto the grave? The houses, they're made of brick. And you wonder, are these newly made brick houses or are they houses that have had at least, what, 150, 200 years of history? You just go to the nearest place and if you have a bit of imagination, if you have a bit of curiosity, you can really make anything, you can really make anything an adventure of your own. It doesn't have to be some grand vacation, it just, just could be a road trip. So, in addition to being the home to Mark Twain for many a year, Elmira's also known for its big industry. So that's why you see a lot of bridges, a lot of old timey stuff that looks industrialized, looks mechanized. You can also find a giant electrical plug for some reason. I mean, look at this. It's insane. It's huge. It's monstrous. What type of... What type of outlet would need this? Huh. Like, wow. It's quite large. At least 20 feet or so. Well, here I am in downtown Elmira, and you can really see the true grit of this sort of rust belt-ish city. Truck going by, approaching me. You know, sadly, everything's not up to shape. Not everything looks great. Sometimes buildings are torn down. Sometimes, I don't know what's going on, but it looks a bit dilapidated. With this, with these major streets, I don't want to get hit by a car, you know. So yeah, there's all this stuff. And so you'd see these local places, local businesses sprawling, especially in the downtown area. But yeah, we are slowly walking our way towards downtown historic Elmira. Should be a fun sight to see. A lot of trucks going by, a lot of noise. That's sort of the industrial side of it. But here, this is uh, the headquarters, I believe, of one of the biggest banks in the uh, upstate New York region, I think. So they got a big building to, you know, flex on all the other smaller banks. Understandable. Now, of course, in today's modern age, this is no New York City. This is no Philadelphia. This is no Los Angeles. However, back when, you know, people had horse-drawn carriages, back in the Gilded Age of some sorts, late 1800s, this was the place. This was the place where farmers and families from these farm towns would just go, have a nice day, explore the city. But yeah, I think I'm currently in a park because this is not the usual city scene, but if you go over here, of course, yeah, you see all the city. Uh, I think right there, that's the big historical block that I was talking about. Over there, I think that's a different city. It's still in this area, but I'm pretty sure they classify it as not Elmira. This is the mighty Chemung River. I may be pronouncing that incorrectly, but I'm not from here. I'll just say Chemung. Chemung, maybe, I don't know. This is the river. 
and eventually I think it comes from uh, yeah it comes from here flows all the way there and eventually miles away it's gonna end up in the Susquehanna River which eventually leads into the Atlantic Ocean so yeah you'll see a bridge here there's mountains in the distance that is uh, Southport I just realized that is the town of Southport which is not Elmira all right, now that we're in the historical district, you can see there's so many buildings with many floors and stories. I've always wondered who lives up there ever since it's always been abandoned. Maybe there's still people living there who just don't want to come out onto the ground floor. As you can see, this is a very old part of the town. Not in a great shape, but still it holds much history. You know, I've always loved these things, these antique advertisements. It's basically a time capsule into a different period. Because I'm sure that would have been a business back in the 30s, 40s, 50s, who knows? So approaching me is something really cool but weird. There's this giant weird sculpture here. And I have no idea what it means, what it represents. It's just a random squiggle. <laughs> I find those little quirks of each little town, city, to be just so fun. It's a red house. Looks quite old. Still has the old type of windows. So naturally, after a day of walking around and stuff, I'm getting a bit of hunk, bit of hunger. So I gotta figure out what is gonna satisfy my palate here in Elmira. But first, take a look at this old building. It has vines growing out on it. No, not vines. It's just a bunch of leaves. Quite interesting. Adds to the flair of the city. I was able to do something to satisfy the hunger that I had. Uh, I went to a place called Central Huts, known for their everything dogs. So I decided, why not get an everything dog? It's right in here. I'm not gonna do something gross like eat in front of the camera, so I'll just tell you how it was after. Bada boom, this is what it looks like. Ordinary hot dog, but it's got a lot of meat on it and cheese and mustard, ketchup, whatever they could find in the kitchen. All right, so yeah, I had the hot dog. It was really nice, it was delicious. Wanted to go to a local place because local places are probably better than chains, give you better service, and they're also very unique. You're gonna find little tweaks of, you know, their community. When, you know, you're ordering the food, when they're serving it to you, just the overall spirit of going to a restaurant or a place or any place that's local, you're always gonna find something unique. If you're traveling all over the place, you want to sort of support the communities on which the town is built on. So I feel like going to a chain store, if you're going around, is sort of counterintuitive to the whole point of exploring different places. So that's my philosophy on it. But I have one more place to go. I'm getting a little craving for ice cream. And so the local places to get ice cream are clearly the best. So let's check this out. Maple on Dairy Family Restaurant and Ice Cream Parlor. And the best part? They got a polar bear. Right on the roof of their house. And this is what the Sunday looks like. It's pretty nice. So yeah, I'm satisfied with today. I'm gonna end this off uh, right now, but for the future, I'll be going on more travels. And that's about it.